Welcome to my chambers. Earlier this week, the FBI released 300 more emails from the investigation of Hillary Clinton's misuse of emails while she was Secretary of State. Sounds like it's old news, but it's new. These emails were taken from the server of a non-government person to whom Mrs. Clinton sent them, and they all contained confidential or secret material, material the United States government wants to keep secret and that Mrs. Clinton swore an oath to keep secret. The person to whom she sent them was hacked by Russian and Chinese and Israeli intelligence agents, demonstrating conclusively that the secrets that Mrs. Clinton swore an oath to retain, she in fact exposed to foreign governments, at least two of which are hostile to the United States of America. This changes substantially the case against her, which was dismissed by the FBI in July, reopened by the FBI in October, dismissed again by the FBI in late October, and now probably will be opened again. Why will it be opened again? Well, one of the measurements that the government uses before it decides to prosecute is, has the person that we think we want to prosecute caused any harm? During the campaign, Donald Trump argued aggressively that Mrs. Clinton exposed secrets to foreign and hostile powers. FBI agents who were not pleased with their director's decision not to seek Mrs. Clinton's indictment made the same argument. Mrs. Clinton denied it emphatically. We now have proof that Donald Trump was correct and that the complaining FBI agents were correct and that in fact American state secrets were exposed and to and received by Russian and Chinese intelligence agents who wish us harm and Israeli intelligence agents who wish us good, so-called friendly hackers, because of the gross negligence of Mrs. Clinton. This ramps up the case for her prosecution. In fact, when Senator Jeff Sessions, whom President-elect Trump has nominated to be Attorney General, was asked about this at his confirmation hearing earlier this week, he said, I am going to recuse myself from any further involvement with Mrs. Clinton, particularly with respect to the emails, because while I was a senator, I was harshly critical of her. That is telegraphing to the legal and judicial and law enforcement communities. The investigation will be reopened again because the case for prosecuting Mrs. Clinton is now stronger than ever. Welcome to my channel. Let's go through the timeline of Papadopoulos. And the reason we're gonna go through this timeline is what we're going to show here is that something we already knew. Basically we knew that there was willingness from Team Trump to reach out to Russia for dirt on Hillary Clinton. Now on the other side, which we'll get to in a second, Hillary Clinton's team apparently, the people who are working with Fusion GPS were perfectly fine getting information from the Russians about Trump. So there's a bit of a mirror image going on here. Here's the timeline of events. So Papadopoulos learns in early March 2016 when it's becoming clear that Trump is probably going to win the nomination, that he would be a foreign policy advisor for the campaign. He was living in London at the time. He then traveled over to Italy, and there he met a professor based in London. I do love how all of these things are written up so that you don't actually know who these people are. I do, I do like that they call him the professor. It sounds like a Sherlock, a Sherlock Holmes story. It's like Moriarty. He meets a professor based in London. Professor Moriarty seems uninterested in the defendant, Papadopoulos, until he found out that Papadopoulos worked for the campaign, at which point suddenly he was very interested in Papadopoulos, and Papadopoulos was interested in the professor because the professor claimed to have substantial connections with Russian government officials, and Papadopoulos thought that this could increase his importance as a policy advisor to the campaign. So here is one of the defenses that Trump can use on Papadopoulos stuff from the very beginning. It's pretty clear that a lot of people in the Trump campaign knew that Trump wanted to be warm toward the Russians. To be fair, Trump was very clear about this. Okay? Trump went on the campaign trail and talked about how he liked Vladimir Putin, and Putin was a good guy, and we've killed people too, and we should have a better relationship with the Russians. Would that be the end of the world? It wasn't like Trump was hiding the ball here. He was saying all this stuff publicly. And so just as when President Obama said, wouldn't it be great if someone cracked down on these conservative 501c3s, and then his IRS went and cracked down on the conservative 501c3s, it is quite possible to believe that Trump was going out there saying, we should have a warm relationship with the Russians, and also Hillary Clinton is the devil, and a bunch of his lower down people thought, hey, we can kill two birds with one stone. If we work with the Russian government, maybe they'll provide us information on Hillary, and we'll be close with the Russians. That'll be awesome. That's just what the boss wants. But it's quite possible that Trump never instructed anybody to do any of this. So even if 
It turns out that low-level members of the Trump campaign or high-level members of the Trump campaign were trying to collude. It's possible that doesn't go all the way to the top. In fact, as I've been now claiming for a year and a half, I think that's very unlikely that Trump knew about any sort of collusion, especially because if you were going to collude with Russia in illegal fashion, would you tell the man with the biggest mouth on planet Earth? Would that be your first choice? Doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, in any case, around March 21st, the campaign told the Washington Post that Papadopoulos was one of five named foreign policy advisors for the campaign. He then met with the professor in London. The professor brought with him a female Russian national, the female Russian national, as she is known in this document, introduced to defendant Papadopoulos as a relative of Vladimir Putin with connections to senior Russian government officials. So, ooh, hoo, hoo, they're meeting with the Russians. Okay, here's the thing. A lot of people in a lot of campaigns meet with foreign policy, foreign policy members from other countries. So that in and of itself is not criminal. The question is whether the foreign go- the, is whether the, the Trump campaign was working with Russia to subvert the election. Meeting with somebody who's close to Putin does not count. Okay. Following the meeting, the Papadopoulos emailed the campaign supervisor. We don't know who this is. This is why Papadopoulos is important because after he flips, it's quite possible we're going to find out who campaign supervisor is. Right? Who was supervising him at the campaign, and that may take us further up the Trump chain, and several members of the campaign's foreign policy team and said he'd met with his good friend, the professor, who had introduced him to the female Russian national who's described as Putin's niece by Papadopoulos, as well as the Russian ambassador in London. Papadopoulos said the topic of their discussion was to arrange a meeting between us and the Russian leadership to discuss U.S.-Russia ties under President Trump. So again, this is not necessarily illegal. Okay, as everyone has acknowledged, campaigns meet with foreign policy advisors from other regimes all the time. Because you do want to start figuring out what the relationship's going to be like if, in fact, your person is elected. Later, apparently, Papadopoulos learned the female Russian national was not a relative of President Putin, um, and uh, he never actually met the Russian ambassador in London. He attended a national security meeting in Washington, D.C. with Trump and other foreign policy advisors for the campaign. When he introduced himself to the group, he said that he had connections that he could help arrange a meeting between Trump and Putin. Okay, again, none of this is illegal. After that trip, Papadopoulos worked with the professor and female Russian national to arrange a meeting between the campaign and the Russian government. Again, none of this is illegal. I keep saying that because people are trying to suggest that every meeting attempted to be brokered between Trump and the Russian government must have been about Hillary Clinton. This is untrue. There is not evidence of this. Even if Papadopoulos was told by the Russians that they wanted to funnel information to the campaign, it is not clear from this document that the Trump campaign took him up on that or even really suggested a desire to take him up on that. In April 2016, Papadopoulos sent multiple emails to other members of campaign's foreign policy team regarding his contacts with the Russians and his outreach to Russia, so we'll find out who those people are, I am sure. And then the, the, key, the key provision here happens on April 24th. Or April 20, it's April 26th, rather. Okay, here it is. On or about April 26th, Papadopoulos met the professor for breakfast at a London hotel. Up till now, they'd only been talking about Trump meeting with the Russians or Trump people meeting with the Russians, but nothing about actually passing dirt on Hillary Clinton. Here is the key moment. On or about April 26th, 2016, defendant Papadopoulos met the professor for breakfast at a London hotel. During this meeting, the professor told defendant Papadopoulos he had just returned from a trip to Moscow, where he had met with high-level Russian government officials. The professor told defendant Papadopoulos that on that trip, the professor learned the Russians had obtained dirt, right, in quotes, on then-candidate Clinton. The professor told Papadopoulos, as Papadopoulos later described to the FBI, the Russians have dirt on her, the Russians had emails of Clinton, they have thousands of emails. So it is unclear, number one. So people are saying, well, this happened in late April. March is when WikiLeaks or whomever attacked the DNC and, uh, and got all the emails out of the DNC. It is not clear that the emails they were describing here are those emails. It's quite possible they're talking about the 33,000 emails that Hillary had deleted. And maybe the Russian government had hacked into her server when she had a private server in her bathroom. Okay, so all of that being the case, now we know the Russian government is trying to funnel information to the Trump campaign. So what happens after that? Following the the conversation, Papadopoulos continued to correspond with campaign officials, continued to communicate with the professor and the Russian MFA connection in an effort to arrange a meeting between the campaign and the Russian government. Again, it is not clear. It is not clear that these meetings necessarily had to do with passing Hillary information. And this is an important question. If the meetings were just about Trump meeting with Russian people, big deal. If the meetings were about Trump meeting with Russian people to coordinate election efforts, that is a big deal. Okay, but again, that evidence is still lacking at this point. We'll have to wait for more evidence to come out. Um, 
Papadopoulos shared information from the MFA connection. Apparently, he said that they were open for cooperation. Um, and again, it's not clear what cooperation means. At one point, the, the government notes that the official forwarded a Papadopoulos email to another campaign official and stated, quote, let's discuss. This is about having a meeting. Let's discuss. We need someone to communicate that DT, Donald Trump, is not doing these trips. It should be someone low level in the campaign so as not to send any signal. Okay, so there's two ways to read that. One is Trump wants to coordinate with the Russians and he wants to send someone low level to do it so it doesn't reach Trump. The other way to read that is that they're just trying to brush Papadopoulos off, right? They're saying to Papadopoulos, you have no power, get out of here, we don't care about you. And someone low level in the campaign uh, should, should tell him that Trump is not doing these trips so as not to send any signal that Trump himself doesn't want to do the trips to the Russians, but just, you know, basically brush Papadopoulos off. In any case, what comes out from all of this? What is the final statement? The final point from all of the Papadopoulos stuff is that basically the, the situation shows that the Trump campaign, as we already knew, was willing to work with the Russians, or at least members of the Trump campaign were willing to work with the Russians to take down Hillary Clinton. Did they actually do it? Unclear. But we already knew that from the Donald Trump Jr. letters. We already knew that from the Donald Trump Jr. emails. So nothing new under the sun. The media are blowing this out of proportion. We're going to have to wait to see where this goes from here. But there's no question that the Papadopoulos stuff is much more damaging to the Trump campaign than it is to the, than is the Manafort stuff, than it is to the Manafort stuff. So I want to talk about the latest on the Clinton dossier and what that means, because now we have basically two parallel stories. We have the Trump attempting to collude with the Russian story, which may or may not be real. And then we have the Hillary attempting to collude with the Russian story, which may or may not be real. A lot of this seems like smoke. A lot of it seems like not fire. While all of this is happening, the Clinton dossier stuff continues to blow up. So one of the sort of accusations here is that if things get too bad for Trump on the Trump-Russia stuff, that eventually he's just going to order his DOJ to look into, investigate Hillary Clinton and the Trump oppo research project. So here's what we know, again, about to recap about the Trump Oppo Research Project from the Clinton team. So Clinton team went to Fusion GPS, a Democratic firm, and they paid them apparently millions and millions of dollars. Um, apparently they paid a law firm, right? This law firm is a major law firm. So not every dollar spent at the law firm went to Fusion GPS. I used to work at a major law firm called Goodwin Proctor. It had, you know, dozens and dozens of branches all over the country. Just because you use Goodwin Proctor doesn't mean that any specific area where Goodwin Proctor was funneling money meant that you were paying that place, right? Goodwin Proctor was bigger than the places that it was spending money. But... The same thing is true of the of the law firm that Hillary Clinton's team was paying. In any case, they spent millions of dollars on this law firm, and then apparently some of those millions were passed on to Fusion GPS for this Apple Research thing. Okay, the Apple Research thing ends up being the Steele dossier. Christopher Steele, former MI6 spy, he goes over to Russia, he talks to a bunch of Russian officials, and he comes back with a dossier. Some of the things in the dossier have been debunked. Some of the things in the dossier have not been debunked. For people who say that it's been debunked, that is not true. Some things have been debunked. Some things have not been debunked. The big question here is, did Hillary Clinton and her team know that the Steele dossier was filled with Russian intel? Did they know that the Steele dossier was filled with references to direct government officials in Russia? Now, there are people on the left who say, well, there's a difference between Hillary digging up dirt on Trump's dealings with Russia and Trump dealing up dirt, uh, digging up dirt from Russia about Hillary's dealings not with Russia. I think there, there's, there may be something to that, but I don't think that it fixes the generalized problem, which is if Hillary Clinton is complaining about Russian interference in the election and about Trump coordination with the Russians, then going to the Russians for help against Trump both undercuts that narrative and demonstrates that your own team was willing to work with the Russian government if they could dig something up about then-candidate Trump. So Jeanine Pirro is leading the charge. A lot of Republicans are, are already in sort of defensive mode despite the fact that the Mueller investigation hasn't come up with anything really serious yet. They're already in defensive mode, and they're suggesting that Trump go on offense against Hillary Clinton. Again, I think Hillary Clinton should be fully investigated. I think all of this should have a full investigation. But to suggest that, you know, the, the main line of attack right now should be about Hillary Clinton, and when nothing really bad is happening from the Mueller investigation, seems to me uh, like uh, revving up the engine while you're still in neutral. So here is Jeanine Pirro saying it's time to lock Hillary up. It's time to shut it down. Turn the tables and lock her up. That's what I said. I actually said it. Lock her up. Well, she said it. And since she said it, I guess we have to do it. The Obamas and the Clintons built the Trump-Russia connection, collapsed yesterday when it was disclosed that the Clinton campaign and the DNC paid $12 million for a dossier to connect Donald Trump to Russia. Okay, we can stop that there. So here is the, the problem with this. Again, Hillary's malfeasance doesn't 
justify Trump's malfeasance. Both of them seem to have been willing to engage in something, right? It looks like the, the Clinton campaign actually engaged in something, right? The idea that the Clinton team didn't know the millions of dollars were being funneled for a dossier and what the dossier included, I find highly suspicious. So what we have here, I said this online and people on the right went nuts. Okay, what I said was basically what we have in the last election cycle were two teams of people who were willing to collude with the other side, meaning Russia, in order to get their opponent. Okay, that much is true. Then people say, well, Hillary was worse because Hillary actually colluded, meaning the Steele dossier. Okay, that may be true. I'm not denying that. But just because both sides were willing to conclude and only one side was capable of finishing the collusion, that does not actually mean that both sides are good or that one side is good. Now, people can say Trump is better than Clinton. Maybe in the same way that I guess attempted murder is better than actual murder if we're talking about crimes here. But I still don't think that that really meets the standard of decency. This, I guess, goes back to the last election cycle when I said that both candidates can suck. People have a tough time with that. But the reality is that what we're seeing from Team Trump, while we don't see criminal activity yet from Team Trump with regard to Russia collusion, the idea that they're willing to collude with Russia has been known since the Donald Trump Jr. emails. And those emails were not good for Team Trump, right? That was kind of scuzzy. I mean, if you're willing to work with the Russians in order to dig up Trump uh, dirt on Hillary, that's not good. And the fact that Hillary was willing to have somebody dig up dirt on Trump from the Russians is also not good. It's possible that everyone sucks and that one is worse. Both things can be true at once. Well, the Democrats are still trying to focus in on, on this dossier, too, and trying to say that the dossier contains damning material about Trump. Adam Schiff, who's this rep representative Democrat from, from California, uh, he says that the dossier has still not been debunked, and there's still crazy eyes. Adam Schiff says that it's, that, that it's most important is to determine what is true in the dossier. I certainly would have uh, you know, liked to know who paid for it earlier, but nonetheless, that's just one factor to be considered. It doesn't answer the ultimate question, which is, how much of the work is accurate? How much of it is true? Uh, and my colleagues don't seem particularly interested in that question, but that is really the most important question for the American people, and that is, how much of this allegation that uh, Christopher Steele makes and the reports that he hears are true about the Russian government wanting to help the Trump campaign? Okay, now, so a couple of things. One, there are two things that are worth investigating. One, what's in the dossier is true, and two, did Hillary Clinton work with the Russians in order to compile a dossier about her opponent, right? I mean, that is, it. That is bad stuff.